ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाया so i'd like to welcome everybody thank you very much for joining us today we want to seek your good wishes your blessings so that we can continue uh, with the eighth canto we are on chapter 2 um oops what happened there okay so let's uh, read this verse uh, 33rd verse of uh, this chapter yakashalesho balina manantha koraga उट Yeah. Anyone do you want to read or can I read? I will read. Thank you. Translation the supreme personality of God is certainly not known to everyone but he is very powerful and influential. Therefore although the serpent of eternal time which is forceful in fearful in force endlessly chases everyone ready to swallow him if one who fears this serpent seeks shelter of the Lord the Lord gives him protection. for even death runs away in fear of the lord i therefore surrender unto him the great and powerful supreme authority who is the actual shelter of uh, everyone mm. i like the way it says serpent of eternal yeah. time <laughs> it's like uh, when we um converse if we don't converse about god consciousness krishna consciousness we are compared to the frog <laughs> the frog croaks croak 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 whatever it is and because the frog is croaking in the middle of the night it might be very dark but the snake will hear the uh, croaking and he will come and catch the frog and swallow him up so the snake of time will also catch up to those who don't talk about krishna because ultimately uh, if we don't converse about the lord hear about the lord chant about the lord then we just wasting our time yes nani ben yes something is there that even death runs away in fear of the lord i thought death was this time for everybody and it doesn't even not nobody can be protected from death mm it's true but uh, like we were reading yesterday whatever the lord qualities have those who are devoted to him have the same qualities the lord is eternal and whoever is connected to the lord is also eternal we are all eternal <coughs> but the idea is death actually becomes a servant of the devotee it's like uh, we were reading about dhruv maharaj um although it's not necessarily stated in the bhagavatam but when dhruv maharaj uh, left this world the planes came the uh, um what they vishnu dutas brought the planes to take him to vaikuntha or, or to his planet and at that time death was there but death came as uh, to be the stepping stone for dhruva to put his feet on to climb onto the aeroplane so death actually uh, is is yamraj yeah yamraj is actually scared of uh, supreme lord of course um he's a servant of the supreme lord so yes everybody is subject to death but the devotee is not even while it's living he's because he's focused completely on the lord uh he's considered his body is considered um, eternal actually like propad is he was not burned he was laid to rest in samadhi in his body the reason being his body is spiritual because he's completely connected to the lord a little bit like if you have a rod iron rod that's in fire for a long time if you take that iron rod out and touch it to paper the paper will uh burn so the similarly this um this this we self will as soul has become so much in touch with god uh that he he's got the same qualities as god 
Even his body is spiritual. Does that make sense to anyone? Can you hear us? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Makes sense. Yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay. Good. So we that's why we take shelter of the Lord. Uh, yeah. If one who fears this serpent seeks shelter of the Lord. Now, we're not getting any younger. <laughs> so we're getting closer and closer. And of course, the fear of, of death is there. The fear that we're going to leave this body. So we have that fear. We take shelter of the Lord. The Lord will give protection because even death runs away from the Lord. So that is our only protection. We cannot get protection from anything in this world. Only the Lord can give us this protection. And it's good to keep hearing this, keep, good for me to keep speaking this, because hopefully one day I'll be convinced. <laughs> so. <laughs> so chapter two, uh, this is the elephant Gajendra's crisis. This is really, really important. And a very nice class gave by Induleka Maji on Saturday. And in the Lekamaji, if I um, slip up anywhere, miss anything, please do uh, come in and explain. Huh? Oh no, you! I cannot, I, I cannot explain to you, right? <laughs> you are reading, no, and no, you know. you've you, you've studied it so well. I was really impressed. So thank you very much for sharing what you did on Saturday. I learned a lot. So thank you. Uh, there is a large mountain called Trikuta. Uh, which is surrounded by an ocean of milk. Its three principal peaks are made of iron, silver, and gold. And its many waterfalls create beautiful sounds. It is a favorite spot for the inhabitants of the higher planets. Trikuta, a mountain belonging to the great devotee Varun. Now, Varun's father is, uh, who's his father, anybody remember? Varun, there's father. Okay. Uh, anybody remember his father? He's the richest man in heaven. Is it Kuber? Yeah. <laughs> Kuber. That's right. He has many lakes and rivers with beaches covered with, by small gems resembling grains of sand. There was one special lake full of swans and golden lotus flowers having trees which gave flowers and fruits in all seasons. The king of the elephants, Gajendra. He once wandered towards the lakes in Drikuta mountain with his female elephant friends and his children. His whole, all his, a whole entourage was there. Uh, and he was walking uh, like a king. Uh, elephants can walk uh, very strongly, you know. On his way, he broke many plants, creepers, thickets, and trees, not caring for their piercing thorns. He was very, very strong. Simply by catching the scent of that elephant, all other elephants, tigers, and ferocious animals, uh, such as lions, rhinoceroses, great serpents, they would flee in fear. So he was considered perhaps the most powerful personality on earth, or on, uh, in this place anyway. Okay. Surrounded by the herd's other elephants, Gajendra made Trikuta mountain tremble. He was so big and strong, all round, because of the weight of his body. Afflicted by thirst, he soon arrived at the banks of this, this special lake. And he entered the lake, uh, and he bathed thoroughly, and he was re revealed of his fatigue. Mm. However, Providence had it that a strong crocodile was also in that lake who was angry at the elephant for disturbing him and unexpectedly he attacked and he grabbed hold of uh, the elephant's leg in his mouth, in the water. Now, Gajendra is strong. The elephant is strong on land, but that's, the water is not his natural habitat. That belongs to the crocodile. Gajendra tried to free himself from the jaws of the crocodile, but he could not. None of the other elephants could help Gajendra, even though they tried grasping him from behind. 
for 1,000 years. It's a long, long time. The elephant and crocodile fought in the water. At that time, even the demigods, they, were, they came to watch. And they were surprised seeing this fight, how this elephant and crocodile were fighting. The gender was very strong, but not in his natural position. In the water, the crocodile is very strong, being in its natural position. So that's a very good example for us. <clears throat> Practicing bhakti is like fighting with the maya crocodile. We should not be in a position in which our strength, enthusiasm, and senses will be unable to fight rigorously. What does this mean? To keep oneself fit, one must replace oneself in a normal condition of life. And what does normal condition constitute? May not be the same for everyone. That's why we have these divisions of Varnashram. If one is unable to perform bhakti in the renounced order, so the brahmachari uh, or the vanaprastha or the sannyas, they generally, they are in the renounced order. That's the, anybody who can uh, uh, um, uh, not give in to the sex drive are going to, can be in those three ashrams. But if one is agitated by sex, then one can become a householder and take shelter of Krishna. Be in one's natural order. Don't try to be in an order that we don't really belong. In that way, we keep ourselves protected. But one should not stop fighting the crocodile of Maya. So sometimes people regard, maybe the sannyasis or the brahmacharya may regard the householders to be in Maya. And in one sense, they are in Maya um, because they're not renounced. But even a householder, and many, many examples, even a householder can be a fully fixed devotee of Krishna, fully surrendered. And there's many examples in the pastime of Ramanujachari, which we'll talk about on Saturday, uh, where he proved that the householder can be even better than the sannyasi uh, by uh, example of his own disciples. So, the elephant was not in his natural habitat, and the crocodile was. Gajendra introspects in difficulty. When Gajendra realized that he was losing the battle, he thought for a long time. Being afraid of being killed, he surrendered to the Supreme Lord. This is an elephant. <laughs> Such a decision is not reached by grossly sinful persons. Only the pious can decide to seek shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna in a dangerous situation. And this was an elephant, but of course, he was no ordinary elephant. And we'll come to why in a few minutes. Um, any questions from chapter two? Hi, Bob Prabhu. I just want to know uh, 1,000 years yeah. of fight. Uh, is that the 365 days like what we have? <laughs> or is it, because I'm, I'm slightly confused which, uh, can't remember which uh, yuga it was. Yeah. Yeah, 1,000 years, 365 days, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, this... No. <laughs> must no, be our, yeah. our year is 365, isn't it? So if, yeah. it, if you say 1,000... It's a long I, time. Yeah, so... Time. It took place on Earth, so is our, our time... Yeah. So this is uh, the word time we are exper yeah. experiment experiencing now. Yes. Gosh. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yes. It sir. is said that it is said that one thousand celestial years. Celestial. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Celestial. Years. Because you know at that at <laughs> those <laughs> time they, they used to live a very long life, hundred thousand years. Mm. Yeah. So for them it might be like um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe our our time. Might not be that long for us. It looks long because if we <clears throat> if we take this, sorry, if we try to tell an aunt that we live hundred years, yeah, the aunt yeah. will love at us, mm -hmm. right? They will say, "How come you live uh, hundred years, whereas our lifespan is four days, five days, seven days maximum?" Mm -hmm. So they won't believe us. Similarly, we we don't we we cannot like kind of uh, accept this uh, notion of. 100, 100 or 1,000 celestial years. For mm. us, it's a long time, not for them. I just can't comprehend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. 
it, it's out of our comprehension, you know, be, yeah. because you have a yuga mentality, how can we comprehend? Yeah, because activity. when you see the picture of an ordinary elephant with crocodile and you feel thousand years if they were just fighting, uh, it just mind boggles, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, even even we cannot um, accept that um, Hiranyakashipu he he mm. did uh, he did tapasya for thirty six thousand years. Mm. So it's for us it's like uh, we can we cannot even imagine that, but it happened. Yeah, different different time scales, different time zones. True. Yeah. Thank you very much. Did <laughs> did Prabhuji? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, did this Gajendra episode? I think it happened in the during the course of the fourth Manu of Tar. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, that's, correct. What, that's what I was reading. So that's celestial time, not nothing compared to us. Yeah, it is. It's, it'll be and it'll be Satya Yuga time. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Hare Krishna. I have a question here. It's it's not related to this uh, this canto, mm. but yes, somebody was asking. When Lord Sri Krishna was here, well, uh, the battle of Kurukshetra was taking place. Was it um, our time or was it uh, in another time though? Lord Sri like, Krishna, it, you find yeah, no, like it, it took no, it took eighteen days. Um, the battle, the battle mm. of Kurukshetra was fought for eighteen days. So eighteen days of our time mm. or of another um, time. I, th I think it is eighteen. Days of our time. Mm -hmm. Our time, it, right? Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Because if you look at uh, the Ras Leela, for example. Yes, yes. One night, it said it's, oh, yeah. this is actually uh, the night of Brahma, which is uh, mm -hmm. very, very, very long time. So he extends the time when mm -hmm. he, he, he wants to enjoy the Leelas. But I think yeah. the Kurukshetra was, uh, it was um, the 18 days of our days, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, then also it was a um, Brahma Vimohan Leela, that was yeah. also one year, but we don't know which year, our one year or... Yeah, yeah. Brahma's year, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. It, the, it happened during the sort of the Mahabharata war, it happened in the Dwapar Yuga, isn't it? Yes. End of the upper, to, uh, beginning of Kali Yuga, towards that time. Correct. Yes, correct. So the time factor, yeah. So I think in uh, the upper Yuga, people lived for thousand okay. years, isn't it? Thousand, thousand years. years. So years. 80 days could be a bit around that, that equation. Maybe, maybe. I think so. Maybe, yeah. Krishna yeah. lived for 125 years. 125 so years, yeah. Of, of uh, 125 years in the, in the upper Yuga. Yeah, then, at the end, yeah, he came towards the end. Wasn't towards it? the end, so we, we're not hundred percent sure. Okay. No. True, true. And we don't know Hare the relation. Yep. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu just wanted to ask this Gajendra. Mm -hmm. Who was he in his previous life? Ah, very good question. <laughs> it was yesterday. No, no, it's today. It's coming up now. It's coming oh, up my. now. A very good question. You like um. Parikshit Maharaj. You <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't listen to my class last last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is Saturday. She may not have been there um, mm. on Saturday. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, he was a great king in Radhumya. All right. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, it's coming up now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about him. Okay, uh, this is text number twenty-nine of chapter three. Nayam Veda Saivanam Yatcha Translation, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by whose illusory energy the jiva, who is part and parcel of God, forgets his real identity because of the bodily concept of life. I take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose glories are difficult to understand. Hare Krishna. Mm. See, by whose illusory energy the jiva, 
have forgotten the real identity. So his mind and taking shelter of him will help us get rid of this Maya. So every day our prayer at least once should be, please don't let this Maya impact me, my dear Lord. Because he's in charge. So this is, sorry, this is the last verse in the Gajana yeah. Moksha. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Very good. So his prayers of surrender. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, in the, um, uh, Kaushalya Maji. It's the next chapter after this that it's described who he is. So Gajendra actually is, um, as uh, Induleka Maji said, he was a king in his previous, he was a devotee, he was a Vaishnav, a great Vaishnav. And uh, one time uh, he made an offense to Agatya Muni because he didn't uh, receive him very nicely because he was meditating actually. It wasn't even his fault. But Agatya Muni became upset with Indra Maharaj. And he cursed him. You're behaving like an animal. You're going to be an elephant in your next life. And um, the king, he was so gracious. He knew this was a great sage. And he loved Vaishnavas. And he knew a sage's curse is never a curse. It's a blessing. So he said, I accept your curse. And... Um, and the sage's curse was a blessing because within one life, he met the Supreme Personality of God and went back to God. So does that answer your question, uh, Kaushalya Maharaji? Are you there? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you. So he was a great king. And because of his bhakti, he could remember, um, he chanted this whole stuti. And Induleka Maharaji did a whole class on this chapter three, this whole chapter three is a stuti by mm. Gajendra. So he remembered this from his previous life. An elephant. The elephants are actually renowned to uh, remember many things. In fact, I, I just read it in a That's few days ago. Mm. Yeah, that an elephant was helped by somebody something like 20 years back. And he was a little baby at that time. And he came across that person who helped him. I don't know how, but he remembered that person and um, he uh, acted very really affectionately towards that person. So elephants actually um, do have great memories. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So Kachanda chanted a mantra he remembers from his previous life. Even if a person engaged in bhakti who falls down, falls down, sorry, uh, he will in due course of time or in a future life, remember the Lord. So even somebody who's in bhakti falls down because of whatever reason. There's so many reasons why we can fall down in this world. But because we're doing bhakti, sometime in the future, it will never be lost. We will remember the Lord. So every devotee should practice chanting the mantras perfectly. Of course, a devotee should try to perfect one's Krishna consciousness in this very life. We're so fortunate. But even if there is some circumstantial fall down, might be some reason we fall down, the practice of Krishna consciousness never goes in vain. So he was praying, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Supreme Person Vasudev. May he give me protection. He is the core, root cause of everyone. He's the origin of everyone. He's different from the cause and the result. Although everything emanates from him, this is the inconceivable nature of the Lord. He's in, he's in everything and he's not in everything at the same time. That's supreme energy. The supreme cause and the supreme result, the observer, and he is also the witness of everything. He's also the supreme energetic. So there's the origin, the energy, energetic. And he's above, he's transcendental to everything. He's above situation of uh, dense darkness when the, the universe is annihilated. He is not understood even by the devatas. This comes again and again in these next two, three chapters, how he's not even understood by devatas or the great sages, and certainly not those who are unintelligent like animals. So there he's speaking about himself. He's saying to the Lord, 
what chance have I got to understand you? Even the devatas don't understand you. Then he prays through the different incarnations. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no material birth, activities, name, form, qualities, or faults. All his forms are free from material energy, and he acts wonderfully. He is the witness in everyone's heart who enlivens the individual soul. So when we're feeling a little down, which inevitably we will in this material world, just remember there is somebody right next to us who can enliven us. Realized by pure devotees who perform bhakti yoga, he gives pure happiness. Therefore, Gajendra says, I offer my respects unto him to fulfill the purpose of which this material world is created and destroyed. He comes. Now he's talking about the different avatars in the form of a human being like Ram or Krishna by his original internal potency as the Lord's fierce form as Lord Nasingadev, as an animal, Varaha, as Dattatreya who preached impersonalism, as Buddha and all the other incarnations. So he's just paying his obeisances to all the incarnations. Then he's just explaining how the Lord is full of knowledge. Without the Lord's mercy, no one can solve the problem of doubts. We all have doubts, right? Everybody has doubts. Is there Krishna? Is there God? Am I really a soul? Will I continue to live after I leave this body? These doubts are there. So only one person can help us with these doubts. Without the mercy of the Lord, no one can solve the problem of doubts. The material world is just like a shadow re resembling him. Indeed, one accepts this material world as real because it gives a glimpse of his existence. The Lord is the shelter of all Vedic knowledge and for all transcendentalists. Because such pure such advanced souls are transcendental. The Lord personally appears in their pure minds. So as, 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 as much as possible, if we keep our hearts clean and minds pure, the Lord will appear, personally appear in, 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 them, in our minds and hearts. Although a devotee may externally not be well educated, this is the point about knowledge. And this is where Gajendra is making his point. I'm an animal. <laughs> because of his or her bhakti, the Lord gives enlightenment from within. 1010. Riyanch, are you there? You can chant this verse. This um uh, ah, good. <laughs> Vajitam Preeti Purvakam Dadami Bhutti Yogantam Yena Mamupayantite Beautiful. Can you tell us the English? What, Prabhuji? Can you tell the English? Prabhuji. To those who are constantly dedicated to me in love. I give them the... Prabhuji, I can't. Uh, uh, I have internet issue. Uh, no, problem. no problem. That's okay. Don't worry. So the Lord is saying to those who are completely dedicated to me in love, I give them the understanding by which they come to me. So this is the, this is the verse that he says that. You don't have to be educated. He will give the understanding from within the heart even without going through the Vedic literatures. Gajendra further prays, since an animal such as me has surrendered unto you, who are supremely liberated, certainly you will release me from this dangerous position. In this world, so in this world, everybody, we're all animals. We're all like Gajendra. This is the problem. And this is the beauty of these, these prayers by Gajendra. They're for us actually. In this world, everyone is in the bodily concept of life. Is a, everyone in the bodily concept of life is a pashu, animal. Everyone is attacked by the crocodile of material existence and is suffering the consequences of bondage. So everyone should pray to the Lord like Gajendra for deliverance. His prayers are really powerful. The Lord is extremely difficult to attain for those who are too attached to 
mental concoction, home, relatives, friends, money, servants, assistants. After worshipping the Lord, those who are interested in the four principles of religion, that's economic development, sense enjoyment, uh, liberation, etc., ob can obtain whatever they want. If, if one wants that, the Lord will give it. Indeed, sometimes, however, the Lord even gives a spiritual body to such ambitious worshippers. This is the amazing thing about the Lord. One may go to him, and there's an example, Dhruva Maharaj, right? He wanted economic development. He wanted a kingdom greater than his grandfather's. Was he great-grandfather? <laughs> but the Lord gave him what? <laughs> his spiritual body. <laughs> The Lord never disappoints. Pure devotees do not desire material objects. So this is Gajendra, he's saying this. Pure devotees don't want anything because they have the wealth of surrender to the Lord. They already have the wealth, love of God. The happiness in glorifying the Lord is much greater than that which is obtained by material boons. But when there is no alternative, so this is... Uh, He's, he's, he's begging and he's uh, asking for forgiveness for asking. When there is no alternative, being fully dependent on the Lord's mercy, they may circumstantially pray for some boon with regret. So this is Gajendra. He's actually a pure devotee. In this current situation, he's struggling. So he's praying to the Lord, I shouldn't really be asking you for anything. But I'm in this circumstantially I'm in this situation. So I'm asking you, please liberate me. <laughs> Gajendra desires liberation. There are two types of expansions of the Lord. Oh yes, minor and major. This is really amazing. Minor forms are jivas, atmas like us, like Brahma and others, when they are not the Lord personally. So this is an expansion of the Lord, but they're marginal expansions, not the internal expansions. The major expansions, the internal expansions are Matsya, Kurma, and others. They're always God, always the Supreme Lord. Gajendra, not wanting to live after being released from the crocodile's grip, prays as follows. May the Supreme Lord give me liberation from this present danger and from the materialistic way of life. Unalloyed devotees who have no desire other than to serve the Lord, worship him in full surrender and always hear and chant about his activities. I, however, I am in danger. So I'm asking for a benediction. So this is acceptable. This is acceptable. The Lord is pleased with this. Where's the proof? The Lord came and liberated Gajendra. <laughs> okay. Gajendra thinks... I do not know how to perform bhakti because I'm an animal and I'm in great danger now. So I just offer my respects with my mind to whatever I see in the universe. He doesn't, he, he, he's an elephant. What does he know about God? So he doesn't even address the Lord. He simply says, I offer my respect for obeisance to the creator of the universe, the universe, the viradrup, the supreme, the super soul who is seen in the core of the heart by perfect mystics. I offer my respectful obeisance unto the Supreme Lord by whose illusory energy, which is uh, the final verse, I think it was, who is part and parcel of the Lord, forgets its, its real identity because of the bodily concept of life. The protector of the surrendered souls who control their senses. So the souls who control their senses the Lord is their protector. The Supreme Lord whose glory is, again, he says it here again, difficult to understand. Very difficult to understand. So when the king of the elephants was describing the supreme authority, of course, he didn't mention. In fact, he insulted them. He called them minor, <laughs> minor expansions without mentioning any particular person. He did not invoke the demigods headed by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Indra, Chandra. So the demigods, they were watching this fight. 
right? They were amazed, but none of them helped him. None of them approached him. The demigods, who are the Lord's expansions, thought, Gajendra is asking help of the Supreme, who is above all of us. He doesn't praise us at all, but rather he belittled us. He called us minor, <laughs> minor expansions. So, okay, let the Lord come. He's praising the Lord, let him come. But we know the Lord doesn't appear immediately. Right? They've had this experience many a time. So the elephant will die. This is what they were thinking. Thus the demigods showed indifference to Gajendra out of false identity. So we may sometimes think, okay, if, you know, let's just take a second bet. You know, Krishna is our first bet. Just in case, you know, we'll have a, a side bet on Shiva or Brahma. That they'll protect us. No. This is the mood of Gajendra is absolutely spot on. Only one person I'm seeking protection from. No one else. And that's the Supreme Lord. However, because Lord Hari is a super soul, Purushottam, this personality of Godhead, he appeared before Gajendra. <laughs> After understanding the awkward condition of Gajendra, Lord Hari appeared with great speed. Since the demigods considered Gajendra's prayers to be directed towards the Supreme Lord, they felt offended. So they were offended by Gajendra's prayers. But this in itself was very offensive. Consequently, when the Lord came, they also went and offered prayers to the Lord so that the offense might be excused. Mm -hmm. There you go, Gajendra, the foot in the crocodile's jaws, and he's offering a flower to Lord Hari, who appeared <laughs> to save an elephant. Amazing, amazing pastime. When Gajendra saw the Lord, he took a lotus flower in his trunk and he said, Oh, my Lord Narayan, the master of the universe, oh, Supreme Lord, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. The Lord then got down from the back of Garud. So there's Garud. And pulled the elephant and crocodile from the water. He then severed the crocodile's mouth from its body with his disc, thus saving Gajendra. There you go. There's the disc chopped off the head of the crocodile who actually turned into a celestial Gandharva. <laughs> and this is um, the elephant in the Dumna. And he gave him a body, the same as his four hands. He uh, achieved Sarupya Mukti. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's the end of the chapter. Uh, chapter three of Canto Eight, Bhag Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Chapter four, Ki Jai. Anybody with any questions? Or oh, is it three? Yeah, it was three. Yeah. Any questions at this point? I put in one question in my mind. Yes. Yes. This uh, the Lord Hari. He was. He appeared as the Paramatma, isn't he? Paramatma in uh, Gajendra's uh, art. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, so how, how come he came down in the form of a, I think, in the form of a Narayan with the Garud? So I thought he would have just spontaneously appeared. I think it's, uh, well, that's a good question. Um, as far as I understand, uh, Indu Lekamaji, this is the Lord who's come from Vaikuta, but that same Lord also appears in our heart. Is, is known as uh, Paramatma, Super Soul. He's an expansion of Shirodokshai Vishnu. Mm. So he can come, he can manifest himself as he likes. So he's within the heart, but he can also come from outside. And that's what he's done here. He came from outside. Oh, he can do what he wants. Okay. Yeah, he came from outside in order to show the devatas. Actually, he, he didn't even, as you said, he didn't even have to come. But he was a little upset with the devatas because they could have helped the elephant. 
you know, they were just standing there watching whilst the, the elephant was speaking such wonderful prayers. He was a great devotee. What happens when a devotee is not feeling, you know, he's in a tight situation? Other devotees help, right? Mm -hmm. And they were not helping. So when the Lord manifested, they realized, oh, oh we made a blunder here. We should have helped Gajendra. So then they started offering prayers. So the Lord wanted to demonstrate that the elephant, even though he didn't call me by name, didn't matter. He didn't have to call me by name. I've come to help him. You should have done the same. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. I just uh, considering your, your comments, you see that uh, uh, Gajendra, mm. his, his uh, uh, head was separated and the demigods were just watching. Because the demigods, they are also being governed by the symbols of mortal nature. Mm. They are, so they cannot react. They are, yeah, they are, they are uh, despite their, their, their demigods, they have, they have the, 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 the enviousness still. Mm. Yeah. yeah. They envy. When somebody is progressing in his spiritual life, mm. even then they can, they can put on some. some yeah, it can be. It can be. Yeah. Very true. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. So here, here we can also say that the Lord may have put everybody in confusion because if uh, the demigod helped Gajendra, then we would know that, okay, demigod can help. So we go to demigods. The Lord wanted to <laughs> glorify his devotee and, and show us that he mm. comes personally when we are in any kind of any mm. situation. So mm. that's why nobody could do anything. They, they just waited for the Lord to come. So that now everybody is talking about Gajendra. Everybody is talking about the Lord came. <laughs> just like, uh, like Prabhupada's case. Bhishma Pitama could yeah. have done something. Drona could have done something. But no, they, 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 if they had done something, how would we uh, glorify the Lord? Yeah. He, he sure. wanted to glorify his devotee as well. How um, Drupadi was dependent on him. Similar situation is here. And actually, if Gajendra wanted to call the demigod, who would he call? Suppose he call he call um, Durgama. Suppose then Durgama is coming. Then he is feeling so much pain. Then he will call Lord Shiva. Then Lord Shiva start coming. Durgama will say, "I'm not going because he's going now." Then he will call another one. The other one will say, "Okay, X is going. I'm not going." So in this way, nobody goes. So when you call to the Lord personally, he comes. There is no way that he doesn't come. Even in our situation. Many of us may have experienced. He doesn't come in front of us because we, he comes in because we, we cannot see him, but he sends his representative. That means that he is coming himself in somebody's body, right? So we don't acknowledge that because we don't see the Lord. We don't have this kind of eyes to see the Lord, but he comes. Anybody who calls him, he will come. That is, we have to have this, this staunch faith in him that yes, my Lord will come and he will he will liberate me from the situation and he does mm -hmm. okay. so my understanding is that no matter what if a genuine devotee calls for the lord he will appear somehow or the other any devotee yeah i don't necessarily yeah. even have to be genuine <laughs> yeah any any genuine devotee if he calls upon the lord he will fulfill that wish but even don't have to be genuine. Mm. You know, it's at the end of the day, we, like, Gajendra was under attack, you know, and hence why he called the Lord. He wasn't calling the Lord beforehand. He was enjoying himself, wasn't he? So you, you could say he's not necessarily genuine. But when he was attacked, whoa, yeah. you know, he called the Lord. That, uh, even that, you, you have to be quite pious to call the Lord. But uh, he would, uh, the Lord will help in, in any situation, every situation. Mm. Only the Lord can help. Thank you, Haribo. Mm. Prabhuji. Yes, what, Nani. What I'm thinking is that, uh, just generally, that when we are happy, we forget the Lord. Yeah. And when in crisis or distress, we remember. Yes, we remember. But still, Lord remembers us, whether it's crisis or happiness. Yeah. So this is his greatness. This is greatness, yeah. 
And it's good practice to, when we're happy, to sit down and just think, this is actually the Lord's mercy. It's actually only his kindness. And I should not get carried away because soon the unhappiness will come. And at that time, I'll definitely remember him. But I'm also going to remember him when I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you should always be grat you know, gracious to the Lord. You always offer gratitude. Even in your, especially in your happy times, because mm. uh, I, I, you know, I heard in a lecture like no, the acronym for Gita is um, mm. um, mm. gratitude is the attitude. <laughs> so you should, you should always be, you know, uh, you always show gratitude to the Lord, especially in your happy times. Yeah, and thank Him all the time, isn't it? For what yes. is doing exactly. for us. Yes. Another thing. Yeah. 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 Every morning you should say thank you for, uh, you know, I, I can. Um, yeah. I'll serve you for another day, have your darshan for another day. Yeah. And even when difficult times come, mm -hmm. actually, if we have this mood, gratitude, yes. uh, of gratitude, even when they feel, thank you, my Lord, mm -hmm. for destroying my pride, for, for putting me in this difficulty, at least I can remember you more. Yes. Or, you know, getting rid of my attachment. Thank you so much. Bold. That reminds me of Kunti Devi to say, give me more duk so I can mm. remember. We're not asking more. for more. <laughs> We're just thanking him. Because <laughs> yeah. we don't have to ask, right? He's going to come anyway, <laughs> especially in Kali Yuga. Yeah. No need to ask him. <laughs> Let's not invite him to. <laughs> more more miseries. <laughs> Enough to deal with. We should be like the gender, not like Kunti Mataji, because... <laughs> Luke will come, as you say, anyway. Yeah. yeah such bad karma will come. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Kuntiji was pure. We can't be like her. True, true. That's true. Yeah, but in, in spite of her purity, she had still... Uh, so many reasons. The, the yeah. Lordship to say, please don't, don't forget me when I'm in... Mm. Uh, That's very true. <laughs> she was an extraordinary person. <laughs> Very good. Anybody else? Uh, Maitri Rishi, anything you'd like to share? Sri Prabhupada said, purity is a force. Mm. Uh, Gajendra was very sincere with the Lord. Mm. Yeah. Yes. yes, he was. Yes, he was indeed. The reciprocation was here. Yeah. Yeah, true, 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 true. So, Hare Krishna, here we can see that it doesn't matter when we we did we did bhakti in our past life. We will mm. reap it at some point. Gajendra mm. uh, as asking Indra Dimya, he he was um, staunch devotee. So mm. he got the body of elephant. He spent long life yeah. in the body of elephant. Still, at the time of death, for him, he re he remembered the Lord. It, it's not lost. It is there always. It's kind of your bank balance that will never go void. It's there. Any time mm. you can retire from there. And it is said in this. Uh, in the, I think it's the 10th verse of the uh, prayer, it is said that, oh my Lord, I cannot reach you, you are too far, because mm -hmm. I am a simple like uh, uh, animal here. But um, the, uh, the Lord will, will say that whatever bhakti he did from before, that bhakti will come into use now when he is in this body elephant and he is in trouble, then the Lord will come. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do now, we may say, oh, I'm doing so much bhakti, I'm chanting, sitting down, I'm doing this and that. I'm still going through so many troubles. But these, uh, whatever we are um, culminating, uh, it, will, it will come at the end. Whatever we are keeping now, we are gathering now, we are doing now. All this bhakti is not lost, never lost. Not a single second is lost. Mm -hmm. We may not get it now, we will get it in future. Maybe next lives or next 10,000 10, lives or whatever, but we will get it at some point. Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity to really make the most of it because how rare is human birth and how rare is coming to Krishna consciousness. So somehow if we just keep convincing ourselves that this is, this is my moment, this is my time, you know, I'm not going to let go, no matter what difficulties come, I'm going to continue. So then, then it's, it's possible, you know, mm. it's possible. Yeah. Guru Mahas always says, live for Krishna, die for Krishna. Mm. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and he did. Live, yes, mm. every time. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And even if you, you, know, you get another human birth, 
this the, the um Kali Yuga will be so degraded, you know, you, you never know how it might Im impact you at that time as well, even with all your bhakti. Karuna Banda, to say something? Hey Krishna, yes, uh, I just, I was just thinking about this, so how to surrender completely to the Lord, how to have this unflinching, staunch faith, mm. and then we can have the mercy of the Lord, Sukhran Maharaj. Shopadi, Mata, and Kajinja shows us really this mm. complete surrender. Mm. Very true. Very true indeed. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, so Kamakshi, would you like to talk through the instructions? Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, we can't hear you. Just, just uh, look, getting ready. Oh, okay. Thank you. I might be coming home late, so I, I, I put it in five details. I will read for this if it's okay. Can you hear me? Uh, no. no, you're very faint. Oh, okay. Let me just put the volume That's up. Better. That's better. Okay. Can you, so, uh, but these are lessons, yeah? You want the instructions no. read? Title is wrong, but these are the instructions that oh, okay. have been sent. Oh, yeah. Right, sorry. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam KJ. The duty of a demigod is to protect the authority of the Vedas. The word Devata refer to one who carries the authority of Vedas, whereas Rakshasas are those who defy the Vedic authority. If the authority of the Vedas is lost, the entire universe becomes chaotic. Therefore, it is the duty of a demigod, as well as kings and aides of governments, to give full protection to the Vedic authority. Yet, otherwise, human society will be in chaotic condition in which there cannot be peace or prosperity. Chapter 2. Thus, while the elephant became reduced in strength, the crocodile became more and more powerful. Now, from this way, we may take the lesson that in our fight with the Maya, we should not be in a position in which our strength, enthusiasm, and senses will be unable to fight vigorously. Our Krishna consciousness movement has actually declared war against the illusory energy in which all the living, enti living entities are rotting in a false understanding of civilization. The soldiers in the Krishna consciousness movement must always possess physical strength enthusiasm and sensual power to keep themselves fit. They must therefore place themselves in a normal condition of life. What constitutes a normal condition will not be the same for everyone. And therefore there are the divisions of Varnashra, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanprastha and Sanyasi. Especially in, in this age of Kali Yuga, it is advised that no one takes sannyas. Can you take it up? I can't see. Sorry. Chapter three. In the dangerous situation of Gajendra, found himself in by providence, he could remember some strothas, prayers and mantras from his previous life by the causes mercy of the Lord. In the purpose to prove by the instructs, it is imperative, therefore, that all devotees in Krishna consciousness practice chanting some mantra. Certainly, one should chant the Hare Krishna mantra, which is the Maha mantra or the great mantra. And also, one should practice chanting Chintamani, Prakasha, Siddhavasu, or the Narshima Stotra. Narshima Every devotee should be practicing in order to chant some mantra perfectly so that even though he may be imperfect in spiritual consciousness in his life, in this life, in his next life, he will not forget Krishna conscious, consciousness, even if he becomes an animal. Of course, a devotee should try to perfect his Krishna consciousness in this life. 
Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so let's go to Nishina Kavach. Thank you very much. It was a good discussion today. Oh, yeah, let's talk.